You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. Our topic in this first segment of our program is yoga and Christianity, and more specifically, the rather shocking acceptance of the practice of yoga within Christendom. Now, why is that shocking? Well, for a number of reasons, the most obvious being that yoga is the central practice of Hinduism, which is not exactly compatible with Christianity. As a matter of fact, its beliefs and practices couldn't be more at odds with Christianity. Now, we've been using Dave Hunt's book, Yoga in the Body of Christ, What Position Should Christians Hold?, as a resource for this series, which the Lord willing, we'll wrap up um, hopefully next week. And Dave, last week you explained that yoga, the, the real goal of yoga is to awaken the kundalini power that's an alleged spiritual energy that supposedly resides within all of us. And uh, it's like a serpent coiled at the base of the spine. And you said that when these kundalini power is manifested, which it is at times with certain individuals that practice yoga, that it is a demonic manifestation. Now, wh why would you say that? Well, the devil is called that old serpent, the devil, mm -hmm. who deceives the whole world. He came to Eve in the garden as a serpent. It's amazing that the devil kind of likes to be called the serpent. Uh, he glories in this. Mm -hmm. And I think we've, I'm surely we've mentioned it in the past, the serpent plays a big role in Hinduism right. and in... Uh, Almost all the religions, Voodoo, other religions of the world. Right? And, uh, yeah. Norse religions, right. uh, Greek mythology, on and on. Uh, Greek mythology, the cosmic egg, symbol of the cosmos, mm -hmm. Was uh, it had a serpent around it? Right. The Delphi. The what is it? The oracle. No, the, the oracle at Delphi. Delphi. Yeah. Uh, was on a tripod. Each leg of the tripod was intertwined with serpents, mm -hmm. and you know the ancient uh, caduceus. Right. That we have a symbol of modern medicine. So the uh, the serpent then is portrayed as something that is good, has healing benefits, and and so on. Yeah. A savior in, in many of those religions. Right. So, however, when you awaken the kundalini, they warn you, you could have some really serious problems. And we mentioned Christina and Stanislav Grof. Uh, and in the book, we didn't have time on the program, but in the book, we uh, tell you some interesting things about how they met. Uh, they actually met at Esalen in the Big Sur, and that was where uh, much of today's psychology got started. Um, and uh, Yeah, the New Age movement, particularly in this country. Big headquarters for the New Age movement mm -hmm. at that time, and psychologists were in, involved in this. Yeah, the different, um, different therapies that were, were developed right. there out of really much, many of them out of Eastern mysticism. Let me quote uh, from their, their book, because they, we've talked about the uh, spiritual emergency um, network, network mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they are the founders of it. Why would they found it? Well, they co-edited a book titled Spiritual Emergency, subtitle, when personal transformation becomes a crisis. And instead of suggesting that there must be something greatly amiss with any transformation that causes a crisis, the book contains 14 papers by doctors and other so-called experts on the following types of spiritual crises. Uh, I won't read all of them. We've got the shamanic crisis, awakening of kundalini, this is going to happen if you're involved in yoga, uh, unless somehow you don't really get deeply into it. Uh, then we've got peak experiences where you realize, you think you're one with the universe. I've talked to mm -hmm. many young men who've experienced that on LSD, for example. And uh, 
crisis of psychic opening. You suddenly you're open to all of these psychic powers, past life experiences, uh, experiences of, of close encounters with UFOs, and then the last one they mention is possession states. Now you would think that any practice that would lead to demonic possession, well, they they don't call it that, but this is what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, it ought to be avoided. But transpersonal psychologists say, oh, this is just a transition into a higher consciousness, and you're working out your problems from the past and so forth. As personal spiritual growth, and uh, yoga is supposedly a shortcut to this spiritual growth, and there must be something wrong. Let me just quote from their website, quote, Spiritual experience can feel like bliss, but it can also feel like hell. It can cause hallucinations, seizures, pain, panic attacks, mania, severe depression, all the symptoms of physical and mental illness. When people suffer this way, they may feel like they're going crazy, and their doctors may agree. But the authors of this book think that in many cases, such a diagnosis is mistaken. They urge the adoption of a new category of clinical diagnosis, spiritual emergency. And, you know, they have, I don't remember how many hundreds, I think there are actually a couple thousand uh, so-called experts, many medical doctors, many psychiatrists, psychologists, on this spiritual emergency network. And you can call this number. You're just practicing yoga, and wow, you're flipping out. You're, things, you got demons trying to get in you that you can see, and you've got all kinds of horrible experiences. Call them, and they'll tell you, well, that's that, okay. Keep calm. This is you, You're moving on to deeper levels of spirituality, mm -hmm. and this is quite normal. Uh, don't be concerned, and we'll help to guide you through this. Dave, this spiritual emergency network, this, this isn't a group of, of Christians who, who are against this, trying to bail people out, remove them, right? I mean, in other words, we're not making this up, is what I'm saying here. No, we, we document it in the book, but uh, this is ongoing today and has been for many years mm -hmm. because people do uh, come into spiritual emergencies. They come into contact with demonic entities. They have horrific experiences on drugs or a lot of them are on yoga. Mm -hmm. So that's just part of yoga. It, it comes with the product. Well, we have put together this series... Uh, probably will end up being 12 episodes if we finish next next week. And our concern is they, this stuff is in the church. That's the, the shocking part. Now, I, I want to quote 1 Timothy 4.1, and you tell me uh, what you think about this application with regard to what we're talking about. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is not by extrapolation. This is direct uh, involvement with seducing spirits and the teachings of devils, right? They depart from the faith. If you stayed with the faith, you wouldn't have those problems. Mm -hmm. You would not be seduced. You would be following the truth of the Word of God mm -hmm. and Christ as your Lord and Master the Holy Spirit indwelling. Paul says, the Spirit speaketh expressly. Make no mistake about this. Mm -hmm. This is not just, you know, some possibility or hearsay. This is going to happen. In the latter days, they're going to depart from the faith. Now, Tom, mm -hmm. we've, we won't get off on that, but it's happening in the church, departing from the faith. Uh, the revivalists, I mean. Uh... For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 